Hey guys, uh, thank you for joining me in another IGCSE Biology Revision video. Uh, in this in this video, I just want to go through um, a specific question that one of my students in Patreon has asked me to cover, um, mainly dealing with the uh, the approach for histograms and bar graphs and things like that. So here we're going to take a look at um, you know, data collected from species A of a plant and species B of a plant and what they're doing is you're measuring the average leaf area of these two species uh, in comparison to the light intensity in arbitrary units. Um, the light intensity changes from 100 to 50 to 10. And what we're measuring is the average leaf area of each of these species, species A and species B respectively. So they first of all ask to calculate the percentage difference in the average leaf area for species A from 50 arbitrary units to 10 arbitrary units of light intensity. So whenever we calculate percentage change, it's really important to understand how we do that. So as it goes from 50 to 10 arbitrary units of light intensity, we see that it changes from 3,900 to 6,500. Well, so what exactly is that change then? Well, the change is 6,500 minus 3,900. So that's 2,600 uh, increase in millimeter squared. So what we then do is 2,600 divided by the original value, which is 3,900, um, and you times that by 100, which will give you 66.6 .6 or 66.7% um, as the percentage increase. Now, here they ask you to plot a bar chart. Now, the bar chart and a histogram is different, okay? And the way they differ is that a bar chart is typically you are measuring discontinuous data. So things that can be sort of categorized into you know, different categories. Whereas a histogram is more about continuous data. For example, if you had a range of heights, for example, then you could, you know, on the X axis, uh, go from, you know, zero to 10 and 10 to 20, 20 to 30 and things like that. And, uh, you know, chart the or, or graph the appropriate values there. But as we're dealing with here, you can clearly tell that we're mainly dealing with categories, right? So we've got, we're comparing species A and species B in terms of the leaf area, but we've really got three main categories of, you know, 150 and 10 arbitrary units of light intensity. And because we're dealing with a category, we're going to, you know, go with a bar chart. And they've told us to go for the bar chart anyway, but it's really important to understand that if they don't give it to you, then you should recognize that sometimes you need to use a histogram for continuous data. Sometimes it's much easier to go for a bar chart uh, for discontinuous data like this. Um, so here, the main things are that, first of all, if you take a look at the values, um, make sure that you can definitely chart the whole thing. So what I mean by that is take a look at what the maximum and minimum values are of the things that you need to plot. And so here, clearly, the biggest number that you need to plot is 6,500. So you need to make sure that your whatever, you know, um, whatever units you're placing on the y and x axis can accommodate those values. And speaking of the axis, we always know to plot the independent variable on the x-axis um, and the dependent variable on the y-axis. And you should be familiar with those terms, but dependent variable is what we are measuring. Okay, so in this case, we're measuring the leaf area. We're measuring uh, that in millimeter squared, whereas the x-axis is going to be um, in terms of the independent variable. So what are we changing? And as a result, what are we measuring? So what are we changing in this, in this experiment? And what we are changing is, of course, the light intensity. And then we're sort of, you know, checking what the average leaf area is, which is therefore the dependent variable. So here we're going to plot the x-axis as the light intensity, and we're going to give it a category. So we're going to go for 10, 50 and 100 arbitrary units and make sure you, you know, title that axis properly. And of course, on the y axis, which is our dependent variable, what, what we're measuring, we've got the leaf surface area in millimeters squared. And so, you know, how I said that 6,500 is the maximum value, well, whatever you plot, whatever um, sort of a grid you create here, and the numbers you put on, well, it has to accommodate 6,500 maximum. So, you know, I, you, you need to figure out what a good, uh, you know, sort of scale might be. And here I've chosen 1,000 uh, per 10 units 
of grid. Okay, so for every 10 little squares, that's going to represent 1000. And when we do that, we can start to plot our data. Because we're comparing species A and species B, we need a key. So I've labeled red as species A and green as species B. And so for each of the light intensities, for example, 10, we're going to start plotting that. Um, and so here we're going to go for 6,500 as species A and the species B had, for example, 2,900. And because we are, you know, because these are categories and a bar chart will always have a space between the categories. Okay. So between light intensity 10, 50 and 100, you need to have a space in between of equal size. But of course, because for each category, for example, within light intensity 10, we are trying to compare the values between species A and species B. That's why we have no space between the two different species. And we're going to plot that like so. So overall, I think the main points are to make sure that you are labeling the titles correctly, make sure, making sure that the x-axis will always accommodate the independent variable and making sure that the y-axis will always be the independent variable and also making sure that you, you are, you're using the right type of chart for the data that's given. And very, very important, making sure that when you initially start to scale and you know uh, put numbers on each of the axes, make sure that uh, you are uh, you have a scale that can actually accommodate all the numbers that you need to be able to represent. The worst thing you can do is make a scale, start the chart and everything like that and realize you don't have space. Um, also, you can't draw a really, really puny graph. For example, you can see that I've drawn a really massive one here that basically utilizes the entire grid, um, but the marking, mask scheme specifically specifies that you need to at least occupy half of the grid, okay? So you can't make a really, really tiny mini scale grid um, or a chart that's not gonna work and that's not gonna give you the marks, okay? And uh, hope that helped and I will see you in the next video.